Thanks, Angela. It's wonderful to see everybody virtually on this call. Welcome. Um, as Angela said, today's um, session is uh, on LinkedIn for job search, and I call this advanced level three, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to be an advanced person. So we'll kind of go through that info in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can get started. All right. So I promise that um, we won't be using slides for all that long. Um, but uh, for now, I um, want to make sure that I provide the context and info that you need, and then we'll, we'll spend most of our time on LinkedIn. Uh, and just so you know, I have a um, another monitor right here, which is why you'll see me look over this way periodically as well. Also, I apologize if I sniffle or sneeze during uh, our session today. My kids gave me a cold, so I'm dealing with that um, as well. All right, so um, <clears throat> welcome again. As Angela said, the session's being recorded, um, and you'll get a link to the recording as well as the slide deck afterwards. So no need, no need to take furious notes. Um, really, this is a chance for you to kind of um, pay attention and absorb everything, think about questions, and consider the strategies that we go over today. Um, after several years now of doing these workshops over Zoom, um, it's pretty clear that the best strategy for everybody is for all of you to stay muted the entire time and to put your questions into the chat uh, window. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout our session. I'll respond to questions that are kind of particularly relevant in the moment. And then we also will have a couple of Q&A breaks during the session where I'll take questions that I haven't gotten to yet, as well as new questions about all sorts of different topics. Finally, um, you and I are now professional acquaintances. Uh, and so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions that um, come up afterwards or that we didn't get to during today's workshop. Uh, I can review your profile or talk to you about um, other aspects of your job search and your career goals. If you think I can be helpful, I'm always happy to do so. So um, with that, let's dive into the session itself. Um, who am I? Why am I here? giving a workshop um, on LinkedIn for job search. What 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 qualifies me to do that? Well, first of all, I have not, I am not, nor have I ever been directly affiliated with LinkedIn. I've never worked for LinkedIn. I've never been hired by LinkedIn. Uh, but I have used LinkedIn since it was uh, founded, uh, both to develop my own professional network and to um, find great people to hire for the teams that I have led in my career so far. So I really have seen it from both sides and I've seen how it's developed. And I started giving this workshop about 12 years ago now, almost 12 years ago. Um, and LinkedIn has changed a lot. The job market has changed a whole bunch. Um, and uh, so the workshop has developed along with it in the strategies that I share. Um, my day job is a nonprofit leader. I work for an organization based in San Francisco that provides interest-free loans to people all over Northern California. And I run an interest-free student loan fund. Um, I, but I've also spent about 10 to 15 years in tech and doing marketing for tech startups um, before I, I moved over to the nonprofit side. So when I was in tech, the, the pandemic hit me hard as it did many folks. And I was laid off three times in 18 months, which was not fun. It was brutal. And I had to look for jobs. I had to find new jobs. I had to figure out what was going to be the best for me and my family. And um, LinkedIn, my LinkedIn network really showed up for me. The LinkedIn network that I had built, um, the, the pro, uh, you know, working on my profile, connecting with people, networking, um, it really helped. And, and as it says here in the slide, you can see every job that I've I've ever had, and I've had at least half a dozen. Um, I've gotten it through networking of some sort, and that includes networking on LinkedIn or leveraging my LinkedIn network. So we're going to talk a lot more about how to do that um, today. This is going to be one of our main topics. All right. Um, but this isn't about me. 
Um, we're not here just to hear my story. Really, it's about you. And so um, if you feel comfortable, please put in the chat window for us, what are your goals today? What do you hope to learn? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, because that'll help me make sure that I cater what I go through today and what I talk about to be as valuable as possible for all of you. Um, so please share um, if you feel comfortable and I'll provide um, just a minute or two for you to, to do that and get that into the chat window before I keep going. Some really great initial comments. Um, what I like about what folks are sharing so far is that you you clearly recognize that there's you know um, strategy involved here. You know that that it's not just spray and pray. It's not just send out as many applications as you can, but that there are ways to leverage LinkedIn and the network that you build on LinkedIn um, to be more effective than any of that. So this is great. Some of what people are putting down will go over directly today, and some of it is actually part of previous sessions that you can watch the recordings for or come to um, when we do them again in the following months. But also you can ask any questions you want related to LinkedIn um, during our Q&A period. So let's keep going. But if you haven't shared yet in the chat, please do so because um, I will see it. <clears throat> All right. All right, so speaking of the, the other sessions in the series, so this is actually a three-part workshop series. Um, over the past 12 years, as we've developed it, there just was too much to cover at once and it just felt too cramped. So um, now we do it in three parts and we cycle through each, each three-month um, sort of cycle. So this is level three and then next month we'll go back to level one if you haven't uh, been to that one yet. So in level one, we covered um, kind of the basics, right? How to create an account. If you haven't done that yet, we took a tour of the LinkedIn interface, if you're not familiar with it. And then we spent the bulk of our time going through the LinkedIn profile and talking about strategies for how to build a really strong and impressive LinkedIn profile that will help serve your goals. Cause that's really the foundation of what you need um, when it comes to your presence and network on LinkedIn. Uh, last month in session two, we, dis we discussed how to build a strong LinkedIn network. Uh, so we talked about the actual mechanism of connecting with people. We talked about um, the best ways to reach out to people and also who you should be connecting with, right? How to strategize not just a, a big network, but a high quality network, which is actually most important. And then we talked about ways to keep those connections with your network strong and stay engaged with your network so that when you need them, when you need to leverage them, they're there for you. And now we come to level three, where we talk about how to leverage that network. So we're going to spend the first part of our time today going through the, the particular tools that LinkedIn has to help you search for and apply for jobs. So it's, it's going to be a little more on the technical side. And, the, and then we'll also talk about how to then go from once you've identified jobs that might be a good fit for you, how to leverage your network to make it more likely that you'll get an interview with those jobs um, and maybe even get hired. Uh, and then we're going to shift gears for the second part of our session today and talk about the, the ways that LinkedIn makes it easier for you to build a strong professional brand so that you can get noticed. And the idea is you might be able to get to the point where instead of you going out and searching for opportunities, the opportunities actually come to you. Um, and this can happen. This was this was happening to me when they sort of in my previous life as a as a tech marketing person. Um, and now um, that doesn't happen because I don't do that anymore. But um, the dream is real. So uh, let's keep going. 
All right, so this is where we're gonna go live to LinkedIn. Um, so the, the the deck just sort of will keep me honest about making sure I don't skip over any any content with you folks, but let's go to LinkedIn. So I'm just gonna sign into LinkedIn. And um, let me just make it a little bigger to make it a little easier for all of you to see. So this is my homepage. Um, chances are most of you are pretty familiar with this, but if you're not, this is, you know, kind of the, the basics um, of the homepage. It provides um, a news feed in the middle of things that are going on in your network, people that you're connected to, companies you follow, groups you're, you're a part of. It's a really nice snapshot just what's going on in your network. So it's a good thing every time you sign into LinkedIn, just scroll through, see if there's anything you want to engage with, et cetera. All right. Um, let's go to the Jobs Hub, though. Okay, That's going to be sort of the central place for active job seekers on LinkedIn. Now, before we dive into kind of the technical tools and sections that I take you through all that, I want to talk about one thing that is going to be, it's really a theme through this whole workshop series, but especially today, is keeping your goals in mind, right? You can't expect to be successful on LinkedIn or really off of LinkedIn with a job search if you don't actually have a clear idea of what you're trying to accomplish. What type of job do you want okay, and why do you want it? What is it, what is it that means success for you in this endeavor? You need to be able to answer that question for yourself because it informs everything. It informs how you build your profile, the types of people you connect with, and then, of course, how you search and apply for jobs and how you build a personal brand. So it's really important that at the very least, at its most basic, you understand what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish and be as specific as possible. Um, okay, but let's talk about um, the Jobs Hub. Um, and th this is really just, again, a place to sort of centrally organize everything related to your job seeking and job applying. Um, the first thing I want to point out is on the right hand side right here at the top, it says open to work. This is a place you go and you, you it's this is a way you can put that open to work ribbon if you want to. I'm going to show you how to get there through your profile. So if you go to your profile, you go to open to right here. Okay. Okay. So then there's a, a number of different things you could be open to. And of course, the one that's relevant here is finding a new job. Okay. So um, if I were open to finding a new job, I would add the types of titles that I was open to, the type of location and where, um, and then start dates, employment types, and then here's visibility. Here's where I can control the visibility of this information. I can um, make it visible only to recruiters. So it, let's say I have another job and I like really don't want my current job, if possible, to see that I'm looking. Or I'm, I'm not really very actively looking. I'm just open to new opportunities that recruiters might bring me. Then I put it as recruiters only. But if I'm actively looking for a job and I want to be as visible as possible, I'll do all LinkedIn members. And that puts the open to work ribbon on my profile picture. So um, I definitely, especially if you are actively looking, I definitely recommend that you set this up if you haven't already. And this is just a way to be as visible as possible for recruiters, no matter what. Oh, okay, I'm not actually doing this. Okay, so now let's go back to the Jobs Hub. Okay, so quick tour. The middle is sort of the, the robots on LinkedIn recommending things to me, okay? Top job picks. Um, and more jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And they just use all the data they have on me for that. But I'm going to go through this left-hand menu with you, okay? And we're going to actually go bottom up. So we're going to start with application settings. So here's where you can actually save resumes um, and save different versions of resumes even um, that you can easily attach when you apply for jobs on LinkedIn. So it's just a nice way to um, make the process easier for yourself. Uh, and you can also, um, you, when you're applying on LinkedIn, which we'll go through that process together in a little while. Um, oftentimes, um, hiring managers and employers will ask questions, and if and um, these answers will get saved and can impact, like, you know, the jobs that get recommended to me, etc. 
Now, um, it's up to you whether you want that data to be saved, but LinkedIn uses it to make its recommendations more useful for you. So, And then self-ID information, that's demographic information. It doesn't show up on your profile, but this allows um, LinkedIn to, um, to save that about yourself. So that's up to you as well. All right. So that's application settings, pretty basic. Job seeker guidance is just some resources that LinkedIn has put together. Um, and it pulls from LinkedIn Learning, which we'll talk about LinkedIn Learning in a little while. Um, and uh, it's I want to, um, it, it just provides um, some really great resources for how to improve things. Um, I want to use LinkedIn to network to find a job. Maybe you didn't have to come today. You could just look at this, who knows? Uh, so I recommend um, seeking, uh, checking these resources out. Um, there's a question, um, Peter, you asked that you noticed that I don't have the share resume data on. Um, is that a strategic choice? Um, that's a good question. Um, yes, it is because I'm not currently looking for a job. And also because I just changed career paths my resume is like very strange and i don't want a whole bunch of tech marketing recruiters reaching out to me one because i'm happy in my current job and two because um my resume doesn't match what i currently want to be doing and so um that is that's the reason that is the strategic choice i made yeah some of you may be in a similar situation where you're pivoting and so you have to think about how to catch the attention of your new field and not your old field that's something we can definitely address. Uh, okay, good question though. Um, resume builder. So this is a cool tool if you aren't happy with your current paper resume, which you still need, by the way. Unfortunately, we don't live in a post resume or post cover letter world. I wish we, I wish we did because they're both super annoying, but you still generally need to have both of those. So if you, if you aren't happy with your current paper resume or you don't have one yet, LinkedIn will help you build one and then you can get resources from LinkedIn, from others, as well as from the library, great resources on resume building. But this is an easy way that LinkedIn will turn your LinkedIn profile into a paper resume and then you can um, alter it from there. Interview prep is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's common questions um, that can help you sort of prep and practice for an interview, which is which is really important, right? Don't ever go into an, into an interview assuming that you just got it down cold. Um, practice is always a good, a good uh, idea. Um, and the cool thing about this is that you can actually look for, you can actually go through common questions for different common types of roles. So that's can be really useful. Um, yeah, all right, next. Um, demonstrate skills. So this is interesting. I was going through this um, a little bit the other day, and this used to be skill assessments, and then they actually sunset skill assessments. So there used to be actual quizzes you could take that would sort of test you on particular skills and then give you kind of a verified, like, yes, Sherry is good at this. That's no longer a thing. It looks like they've sunset that. And so now, um, basically, let's say I wanted to um, showcase my skills in marketing, which could be transferable to other things. Um, I it just says basically like write or record something that where you're talking about that. So, um, you know, um, kind of cool, but like also, you know, I would I would call this extra. <laughs> Get the basics down first, and then you can can work on this. Get your resume, your LinkedIn profile, your interview prep done, um, you know, your job search strategy, your networking uh, skills done, and then and then maybe record some videos. Um, okay, finally, preferences, and then we'll we'll talk about um, job uh, searching. So um, this is interests um, and like what you're looking for. Um, and again, this is sort of just some, it's more belongs in settings, right? So the open to work stuff, job alerts, which we'll go through when we talk about searching and then pay, which is new. This is a new thing, a relatively new thing that you can indicate. Um, so if I click on that, it provides a, a minimum and then a pay period um, per year, per hour, depending on the type of role that I'm looking for. Um, and base pay. And I assume this just helps match recruiters with candidates. 
So you might want to be careful with this one. <laughs> that would be my recommendation. All right. Oh, and verifications, also a relatively new thing. I don't understand. Maybe the, maybe linked recruiters and LinkedIn in general have been dealing with the increases in fraud, as most online platforms have been. But basically, this is, I, I tried to do this earlier and it didn't work. They, they're using a third-party um, platform called Clear. And Clear, basically, you basically give Clear your information uh, your personal information and they check your LinkedIn profile against your, um, your government issued ID. And if it matches, then they're like, okay, you're a real person. Um, and they like, look at your picture, they do facial recognition. So basically clear found my, my ID, but my LinkedIn, the name on my LinkedIn profile doesn't match my government issued ID. Cause I'm not like using my middle name and I have my made a name on there. And so they're like, we can't verify your profile. So clearly some glitches from a product design perspective. So that's why my profile isn't verified. I haven't seen any initial data to indicate that it would seriously hurt anyone in a job search because it's not a very widely used feature yet. Um, but um, I'll definitely keep monitoring that to determine. All right. Um, so one person asked, I think this is important to answer now, can we use these strategies for jobs in the future? As in, can I implement them in the next couple of months for a role I'd like to start in one to two years? Um, most of what, so yes, is the short answer. Most of what we're going to go through during the first part of today's session is going to be more immediate. Like I'm currently looking for a job and here's how I do it. And here's how I activate my network to help me get it. The second half of today's session is more long-term thinking about how to build a brand and that can serve you short, medium, and long-term. The other two sessions in the workshop series, session one and session two, is much is more relevant for folks, whether they're looking for a job right now or in the future, because that's really about setting the foundation of a strong LinkedIn profile and a strong network. So it's a combination of yes and no, I guess. All right, um, let's go to, let me just make sure that I dealt with everything here. Yeah, okay, good. So now we're going to go to um, job searching, okay? So as with anything else on LinkedIn, when you're searching for something, you can just put the search in the search bar up here, in the top here, next to the LinkedIn logo, okay? So let's say I want to, um, I'm going to use one of my favorite examples. I am um, I want to pivot. I, I want to move to a completely new industry and I want to make cupcakes for a living because they're delicious and they're pretty and they make everybody happy. So I'm going to search for cupcakes and that's just a keyword, right? So you'll notice that the results that, um, oh, well, I did this search earlier today. So it automatically defaulted to jobs, but um, it might've just given me general um, results for that keyword. And then I would have had to tell LinkedIn, okay, I want specifically jobs related to cupcakes. Okay. So then it gives me, this is the job search results screen. And you can see on the left-hand side here are all the results. And the right-hand side, as I click through, I can look at the job listings for each one, okay? Um, and then there's a whole bunch of different filters to use, okay? So there's, um, there's um, date posted, experience level, company. These are ways to help you filter to find the best fitting opportunities for you. And the reason that's helpful is because as you can see, there's a lot, thousands and thousands of results and you wanna find the ones that are most relevant for you. And once I have you know, the, um, the filters that I want, so like entry level, for example, because I'm, I am um, just getting started, and I want it to be on site because I want it hands on. And let's see what else. Um, I want it to be um, part time because I need um, I need to I'll, I can't give up my other job yet, right? Okay. And then location is pretty important, right? Because if it's on site, I don't want to move. So. Um, Let's go to, okay, well, we'll just pretend that I live in Philly. Okay, so that's eight results. So not a lot, okay? Um, but that could be 
part of it. In fact, let's actually, let's change this to a few others. Okay, perfect. So, um, so let's say this is the, this is the filter search that I'm, I'm, um, putting together for myself. I like this. Okay. Well, I see this blue stripe here. I can actually set an alert for this search. Okay. And what that does is LinkedIn will save the search filters. Okay. I don't know why it felt it had to reload there. Um, and then, so these are my, my job alerts that I've set up. Okay. And then it will save it. And then it will rerun the search at a frequency that I specify and notify me of the results in a way that I specify. So I, I'm I'm really interested in a cupcake job. I want to run this daily and I want to get an email and a push notification on my phone. And then when I get those notifications, I all I need to do is page through that email and look at the new results. And if any strike my fancy, I can follow up or I can save the job, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. So it really, it's, it's, that's about efficiency, right? You identify a search that seems to be good, providing good results. You don't want to lose it. You want to have to remember that. So LinkedIn will rerun it for you. And it's just a way to kind of operationalize part of your job search process. And you, as you can see, you can have multiple job searches, job alerts, right? You could have 10 different ones with different amalgamations of filters um, that will that will hopefully surface the best the best jobs opportunities for you. Okay. So that's a job alert. Now let's talk about jobs. Um, so let's pretend that I wanted this volunteer job <laughs> um, at volunteer match. Uh, actually, let's let's just do this one. Um, okay, so this is interesting, right? This this looks like it could be a good fit for me. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm just monitoring the questions. Um, um, okay, so I'm gonna respond to this one from. Jenny right now. If you see the same job posting on LinkedIn and on Indeed, should we apply on one platform over the other? Or would it be wise to apply on both platforms? Um, Jenny, it's a good question. If you'll notice this apply button, most companies are actually going to take you to their platform to apply. Every once in a while, there's like an easy apply via LinkedIn or something like that. But most companies are going to take you to their platform, whether it's from Indeed or LinkedIn. Um, so you won't actually have that choice. Um, if you do have the opportunity to apply via LinkedIn, I don't know if it's better to do it via another platform or not. I haven't seen any data on that. Um, so I don't want to, you know, like pretend that I know the answer to that question. <laughs> Um, as but I think what's more important is that you are a well qualified and attractive candidate with a good resume and a good cover letter. And the one thing I will say about LinkedIn is whether you apply on LinkedIn or Indeed or on the company's platform, you should always try and network your way in first. And that's what we're going to go through together in a minute is even before you actually submit the application, there should be steps you're taking leveraging LinkedIn tools and your LinkedIn network to make it more likely that you'll get noticed. So we're going to go through that in a moment. But I want to just highlight some elements of the job listing first. So first of all, you can see a lot of the basic information, title, company, location, um, salary and level, full time, number of employees, energy, skills needed. Um, here, though, we have six school alumni work here. So what LinkedIn puts right at the top of the job listing is how this job listing relates to your LinkedIn network. So if you have connections that work at the company, LinkedIn will call that out for you. In this case, I don't know anyone that works at Invenergy, which is the name of the company, but I do, I did go to the same school as some employees there. So let's start our wheels turning about how that might be useful for me. In the meantime, the rest of this job listing is pretty standard. Okay. So you want to go through it, learn what you can. Um, but I'm not ready to apply it, not even close. I have a lot more work to do. I'm going to save this job, okay? That, that helps me organize for later. And where are my saved jobs? If I go to the jobs hub, they're in my jobs right in the top left here, okay? So we can see manager, 
community engagement, right? And you can see archived and applied, right? And, and for jobs that are um, expired, they'll take them off if they're no longer listed. All right. Um, so this just helps me remember, okay, these are the jobs that I want to pay attention to, right? And I can share them as well, or I can apply. All right, but let's go back to this listing, okay? So I'm, I already called out that six school alumni work here, okay? So now there's, there's a couple different steps I want to take. First is I want to go to the Invenergy LinkedIn page um, right here. And I want to learn about the company. I'm going to follow them. Okay. And the reason I follow the company is so that their updates show up in my newsfeed. All right. And so then I can start interacting with them. I can learn how Invenergy talks about itself, how it talks to prospective employees, which is what a lot of LinkedIn, a lot of companies are using LinkedIn for. Um, and what, what is most important about what it does. Okay. This helps me to understand whether it's a good fit. It also helps me prepare for applying and for interviewing. I come in armed with the company's own language and own materials about what it's doing, what's important to it. And that can be very useful. Also, if I've been following the company and I've been interacting with the company's posts, maybe someone notices that. And maybe I'm more than just a nameless, faceless resume that was submitted. So when, when you're particularly interested in a company, follow it and interact with its posts. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is check out how this company is relevant for my network. So in this case, I've got some fellow school alumni, okay? So um, I would go through and um, chances are most of these, well, some of these people, yeah, I would figure out which school. <laughs> First of all, I've been to multiple schools. Um, and then I would reach out to these folks, okay? I would I would look at each person's um, LinkedIn profile, okay? So I would look at, let's look at Reza's, okay? LinkedIn profile. So Reza and I both attended Stanford, okay? Um, and I would look at, so that's one um, area of commonality that we have. And the er noticing areas of commonality between people is important for networking, right? And then I would just look at his background. Do we have any other areas of commonality, whether in background, um, schools, in um, uh, volunteering that we have done, in um, interests that we have, et cetera, right? Causes that are important to us. And then I would I, I would see if we have any connections in common, um, which we might. Um, and I would see if I can get introduced to Reza through one of our mutual connections. Okay, so you can see how the networking can be a process, right? You identify someone that you want to get in touch with for some reason. In this case, I want to get in touch with Reza because he works at a company I'm interested in. But I need to find my way to Reza first. Reza, yes, we both went to Stanford, but is that a strong enough point of commonality, or should I look for um, should I look for mutual connections? Right. So, how do I find that they they used to? Um, I guess that's it. So, um, so I would I would either um, try and get uh, introduced through a mutual connection. Okay. Or I would try and connect with him directly. Um, and when I connect with someone that I don't know, what, actually, when you connect with someone, period, you always, always add a note. Whenever you message someone or connect with someone, you add a note. You explain why you're reaching out. Why, are, why is this relevant for them? Why should they pay attention? What do you want? What are you asking for? Okay, and always be polite. So in this case, I would say, Reza, I see we both went to Stanford. I'm reaching out because um, I am really interested in a role at Invenergy, and I'm hoping that you're willing to talk to me about it. So a huge, huge strategy for it, networking with people about a particular role or a particular company is called the informational interview. If you're not familiar with that term, it's not actually an interview. It's just a meeting that you request with people to talk to them 
up and learn about the things that you're interested in, whether that's the role itself, the team that the role is on, or the company in general. Okay, it's something that the person can provide information on without feeling like there's an obligation or an expectation that they refer you or give you the job or an interview or anything. Okay. So you're asking for this informational interview. I'd love to pick your brain about Invenergy. What type of company is it? What, you know, do you, can you tell me about about your experience working there? If the person's local, you could offer to buy them coffee. Otherwise, suggesting a short phone call or Zoom call is totally appropriate. Flattery is always great, right? Oh, I see that you are, you know, have an impressive engineering background, and I would love to hear your thoughts on Invenergy from that perspective. Whatever it is. Uh, that always helps. But in general, people on LinkedIn are very open to this sort of networking. This is why they're on LinkedIn, is to make connections that improve everybody's capital, so to speak, their professional and social capital. And the more that they connect and the more that you connect with relevant people for your goals and for your field, the higher your capital. So when they when they give you an informational interview, they they then build capital that gives them access to your whole network because you of course would be happy to return the favor. So that's the idea there, but you request an informational interview with Reza and say thanks, you know, in advance Reza for any help you can provide. The goal is that by the end of that informational interview, not only do you have more information about the, the, the role and about the company, but Rez is willing to introduce you to someone else. And maybe that person is on the team, is the hiring manager, et cetera, or maybe it's just someone else at the company and you work your way through until you find someone who can get you in, who can get your, who can walk your resume in. And that will be much, much, much more effective than simply submitting an application cold, like hundreds of times more effective in this job market. But you can see that it can take a lot of time and effort and it's worth it. It's far more worth it to spend, you know, half an hour strategizing and working on getting to Reza and then having the informational interview than it is to send out, you know, three or four applications that have like a 5% chance of hitting. Right. So not only that, but you flex your muscles, your interview muscles, your networking muscles, you get better and better all the time. So I highly recommend that 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 you um, that you sort of build out that process for yourself when you find a job that you're interested in. And sometimes it, it won't be as long because you might have a connection who works at the company. So you already know someone there. And then all you need to do is reach out to that person and ask them if, you know, depending on the type of relationship you have, ask them to refer you directly or um, ask for an informational interview with them and they can introduce you to the hiring manager. But always, always try and get in that way before just submitting a cold a cold application. Okay, um, that was a lot. Let me see if I'm forgetting something. Um, yeah, I think that we covered all of these things. Um, let me go to questions that have been um, submitted just to make sure there's nothing super relevant that I miss. Oh, good question, Sue. So, so you know how you start following a company and it can show up on your profile in your interest section. And so Sue asks, well, what if I'm following a bunch of companies that aren't necessarily relevant for my goals? Should I unfollow them? Um, and the, the, the answer is mm, maybe, or maybe I think there's a way to, to, to say that you don't want that follow showing on your profile. I'd have to look into that. Um, and and this will, you know, it depends on how um, sort of dissonant they are with the brand that you're building, which we'll talk about in, in a little while, and the goal that you have, right? Um, if they're like complete 180 degrees, like it makes no sense and it kind of detracts from, you know, the, the, the impression you're trying to make, I would say, yeah, you might want to either stop following them or just make that not visible on your profile. But if it's, if it's, you know, like 
for example, um, I'm still following tech companies, even though I'm no longer in tech. That's okay because I'm a multifaceted person with many interests and companies actually like seeing that, especially when it comes to things like volunteering and giving back and causes and that sort of thing. That can actually really help you showing that you have other interests um, and that you um, are an inquisitive and engaged person in the world. Um, Tara, you, is there any utility to the new AI features or are they as annoying and useless as they seem? Um, the, the short answer to that is I don't know. I, uh, weirdly, because I worked in tech, I'm extremely skeptical of AI. Um, and uh, I think that um, TBD on how helpful they're going to be for all of us in the long run. But, um, you know, algorithms have, we have, have plenty of examples of how algorithms and stuff um, which is essentially just an, a, a different form of AI, um, have been used for both good and evil. So I think this is going to be the same. Um, I wouldn't expect too much from AI um, in these contexts. All right. Um, so let's take a quick break. Um, well, you know what? Let's wait. Let's let's go through this, and then we'll take a break for um, more general Q and A before we move into the second part of our workshop. So. Um, this next piece, you know, you you do your job searches, you you research the companies, you're doing informational interviews, but you feel like you're just not getting ahead. Like even when you get interviews, you're being passed over and you feel like there may be some issues with your qualifications or you just don't feel like you're fully on top of where you need to be. That can be a thing, especially in today's job market. There's a lot of competition, you need to find a way to make yourself stand out more. And that could mean more experience, more certifications, more qualifications. And there's some great resources for you available. And I just wanted in the context of, you know, success in a job search to make sure that you're aware of them. So the first one is LinkedIn Learning, which is LinkedIn's um, sort of uh, online course platform. It's massive. Um, and it is a paid resource via LinkedIn. Um, I think it costs like 30 bucks a month or something, so it's not cheap. But um, you can actually access those for free via your library login. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of the same platform as lynda.com with a Y. And so um, you can access, when you sign into the library's website and go to job training and resources, you can actually access most of the same content as LinkedIn Learning. What's cool about LinkedIn Learning is that when you take a LinkedIn Learning course, you can put that, actually any of this stuff, it doesn't have to be just LinkedIn Learning, you can put those courses on your profile. So don't just take the course and learn, but then brag about taking the course, okay, and or, or getting the certification, because that will demonstrate that you're more qualified. Um, and similarly, in addition to just access to the lynda.com stuff, the library just has such amazing resources. So explore everything that the library has. Angela can tell you more, but it really, um, it's such a great resource to help, not just with like the practical stuff around resume building and job searching, but also ways to get more qualified in whatever you want to be doing. Finally, there are some other job training resources and platforms. Coursera and Udemy are, are sort of online learning platforms, and a lot of those courses are free. Um, MOOCs is a thing, the, the like, frenzy around massive open online courses has died down a little bit, but most colleges and universities are still participating and offering some, some version of this, um, at least a few of them. So for example, you can take a college level course from a, a Stanford professor on various topics and then, and it's online, um, but it's a, it's a course um, and, and it's free and you can do it. Google also has career certificates. They have about half a dozen now. They're not free, um, but it, it, I have to assume they're fairly well regarded. So if, if you are interested in any of the fields that those half a dozen certificates are in, that could be a really useful way to quickly elevate your, your qualifications. And finally, there, there are other things like a community college. So if um, if a particular academic type of course would help your qualifications, um, community colleges often have that and also vocational types of training that can be so, so, so useful. It's just such an underappreciated resource that most um, cities and communities have that I urge you to look into your, your local community college. If you're in San Francisco and you're a San Francisco resident, there is the free city 
program at City College that um, you can look into and see if you qualify to get free tuition at City College. Um, I have heard that it's not too difficult to get. So um, definitely urge you to check those out. Um, and Tara is saying that if you're over 50, you can audit SF State classes non-credit for 50 bucks. That's a great tip. Thank you. Um, all right. And Peter has a great tip about um, some AI help for cover letters, which is awesome because I hate writing cover letters. So I'm going to make a note of that, Peter. Um, although hopefully I won't have to write a cover letter for a while. I'm currently pretty happy in my job. Um, okay. So um, let's move now to Q&A. So in this time, uh, feel free to tune out and take a break to um, go on LinkedIn and um, start networking or practice searching for jobs in the Jobs Hub or exploring or whatever you want to do. You can listen to the answers to questions or ask your own questions in the chat. And they don't have to be about what we've already discussed. They can be about anything related to using LinkedIn for job search and career development. And we'll take um, a few minutes to answer questions now, and then we'll move into the second part of our session today about building a personal brand. So I'm going to go through and make sure I haven't missed anything previously. Um, someone asked whether the second part of the session is going to include building relationships. Um, so it depends on what you mean by relationships. Um, it, the short answer is not really. <laughs> um, we talk about building relationships with connections and, and getting more connections on LinkedIn and building a strong network. We talk about that in session two, um, which will happen in another two months. Um, the, the, what we're going to talk about is more about how to, um, build a reputation for yourself uh, on LinkedIn um, that can help you get opportunities. Um, here's one I don't think that I addressed. Do recruiters or employers have visibility into your settings? Will they know how eager or not you are? Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand that question, but the short answer is no. They can't see all the specific settings you have, but they will see whether you put the open to work ribbon or not. If you put the open to work ribbon, obviously everybody can see that. If you don't put the open to work ribbon and you just put recruiters only, then they'll be able to see your information, like the preferences you have for where you want to work. If you put a salary, what salary? So anything that you tell LinkedIn and that you say share with recruiters, they'll share with recruiters. Um, otherwise, they'll see your profile, your LinkedIn activity, et cetera but they can't see like the back end settings. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, good question, Jenny. If a job posting wants you to know medical terminology, do you know any free resources to take a course on that? I don't off the top of my head, but I suggest you look at the ones on my list. I'm sure there's something. There's probably even like blogs and websites and stuff where you could like quiz yourself on it. Um, another uh, AI um, tip. This is so interesting. This is the first time that AI has been like a real topic of conversation in these sessions. I'm so glad that it's coming up. So Axe says, I use ChatGPT and add to the prompt, do not make up experience and then put in your resume. Um, and the job post description, and they will, I assume, for cover letters, X, and that's another great tip. See, th these are those sort of like kind of exciting um, uses of these of these tools where you don't feel like you're um, like um, plagiarizing or lying or whatever, <laughs> but when it just sort of organizes things and copyrights for you in a way that's more efficient and better than you could do yourself. Foothill College, Great um, for, for online classes. Great tip, Julie. Um, oh, good question, Axe. How aggressive is too aggressive? Sometimes I connect to recruiters who post to the job. Is that okay? Great. Thank you for bringing this up. Usually I do talk about this. Um, let's go back to LinkedIn. Um, and we'll go to a job. Uh, and you can see the hiring team, right, on a lot of jobs. You can see whether it's a recruiter or someone else. Um, 
and uh, and you could theoretically message them, right? Um, the question is, should you? So in this case, I would say the, the the typical rules apply. Try and network your way to them. So you now you have not just a company to try and network your way into, but actually a person. How can you get connected to William? Okay, and Catalina. See if there's, you know, I have a mutual connection with William. I got it made. Okay. Who can who can introduce me to William? I gotta find that out. And then um that's that's what I would do. If you if you don't have a particular um way to network to the hiring manager, yes, you could reach out to them cold um and explain your interest and see if they're willing to speak to you. But you have to bet that there's a lot of other people doing the same thing. I don't believe it's aggressive. I don't believe it's too aggressive. I think it's perfectly polite and within the bounds of LinkedIn etiquette. However, you shouldn't expect a huge response rate from that type of cold outreach because chances are there are a lot of other people doing it. And there's a reason why they posted the job on LinkedIn is because they wanted to just get the resumes. Right. But it, it's I don't think it should hurt your chances. Um, and in fact, they might remember that you did some special outreach when they see a resume, you know, if you don't have another way to network in and, um, maybe that will give you a slight leg up because their brain will, will register it. How do we follow up with applications that we've made? Is that in the second section? So the, the short answer to that is that you can't on LinkedIn. I mean, you can always message someone directly, but when you apply on LinkedIn, oh, and I didn't actually show you how to apply on LinkedIn. So I'll do that in a moment. Um, when you apply or send in an application, even via the company's um, uh, platform, which is typically what happens, um, you, you're supposed to wait and they will contact you if they're interested. And if you don't hear anything, that means they're not interested. You can always proactively reach out, but it's unlikely to help your chances, right? Um, recruiters, hiring managers, HR um, uh, departments are dealing with a ton of applications. It's not that they lost it. It's that you were filtered out, unfortunately. Let's go through and apply for a job, though. Um, because I forgot to show you that. So, oh, this one actually has it. Okay, so see the easy apply here. Okay, so when some, and you can actually filter for easy apply opportunities when you do job searches. If something has an easy apply button, that means you can apply right on LinkedIn. And there's usually a few different steps. So you share your information, you share your resume, um, you share and you ask questions. And I'm not going to, complete this because I don't want to apply for this job, but that's usually how it happens. And then that's your application for this job. Most jobs though, are going to be more like this one where that takes you to the, um, it takes you to the jobs, uh, pl the company's platform. See, this is their it's Workday is the platform they use, but this is where they take their job applications. And then you go through that process here. Okay, so I hope that that helps. Um, okay. Um, Jewish Vocational Services, another great resource. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, jvs.org. Um, Julie has, a, this is, these are great questions, folks. I'm going to keep going and then eventually we'll go to, to Branson, I promise. Um, actually, I'll stop in two minutes and, and we'll go, we'll do how to spend the last 20 minutes on, on building a personal brand. What kind of recruiters are there? Are there recruiters who can recommend jobs at different companies, but don't dock my pay? Do candidates applying through a recruiter have better chances than cold finders or basically same chances? Great question, Julie. Um, working with recruiters can be really great. Um, because um, first of all, the candidate never pays for the recruiter. It's the company who pays for the recruiter. So if you are talking to a recruiter who's like, oh, we're going to dock your pay after you get hired to pay for it, don't work with that recruiter. That's not how the industry works. Um, so companies hire recruiters because they don't have the resources or it's not efficient for them to go through the search and hiring process themselves. And there are recruiters who specialize in particular types of, of um, candidates. Um, 
So if you build relationships with particular recruiters, which happened to me, then they can be a great resource for you in the future. So, you know, I was in tech, I got laid off a bunch, but there was one particular recruiting company who did a great job finding me great fit opportunities. Um, The reason I got laid off were sort of different, but this company, I really liked working with them and they knew me. I was in their system. I knew particular recruiters at that company. Um, and so they would keep coming back to me with opportunities because they get paid when they make hires for the company. Um, so, um, the short answer to your question is you probably have a slightly better chance if you work with a recruiter, Julie, and, Typically, you don't have to do a cover letter (laughs) if you're being submitted via a recruiter. (laughs) Um, How can you tell if it's legit? Um, Yeah. Um, Yeah. Looking for fraud. Recognizing fraud is really tough. Um, so that's why, you know, you you have to be really careful. Um, look at email addresses, et cetera. Um, if a recruiter is contacting you via LinkedIn, meet with them, right? Or have a phone call with them, look them up online, et cetera, before you ever share any personally identifying information with them beyond what's already on LinkedIn, okay? So that's a, that's a good rule of thumb too, just, you know, to, to make sure that you at least go through some of the process with them. Okay, what's the best way to either attract recruiters or reach out to them? David, I'm so glad you asked. That's a great jumping off point for for the second part of our session. So let's go to that. So um, this next part is all about how to build a personal brand on LinkedIn, a personal brand or reputation. What are you known for? Okay, not just like, what are you good at or what kind of job do you want? But what are you the an expert at? What can someone count on you to do a great job at or be, be a voice for? And the reason that this is important is because this is how you attract recruiters and opportunities to you. Okay, if you become known for something. Um, and the other piece of this is it, it makes self-promotion, which is a very important part of of being successful professionally, it makes it a little easier because it can be really tough for all of us, right? So let's talk some more about personal branding. All right. So similar to kind of the general success that um, on LinkedIn being uh, dependent on having a clear idea of your goals, to build a strong personal brand, you have to define that brand. What type of brand are you trying to build for yourself? Okay. These are some of the questions um, that I think are important to answer when you're setting out to build a brand for yourself. Okay. Um, I'll let you look through them. If we had more time and we were in person, we would like stop and I would force you to actually go through this and answer all the questions, but we won't do that today. We don't have time. Um, But take a look, you'll get the recording, you'll get the slide deck, so you'll have them for to follow up on later. You should you should be able to answer these questions as part of building your brand. Because this is the stuff that you want people to take away when they see your profile, read your resume, see your activity, your postings on LinkedIn, interact with you, come away from an interview. This should inform everything. Right? All right. And then how do you build this brand? So um Once you've defined the brand, all right, you define what you stand for, what are you good at, what sort of flavor are you putting out into the world, then you've got to actually um, promote that brand, okay? So first of all, as I mentioned, self-promotion is really important and it's tough. So just a few tips to help kind of make that a little bit easier. Share your actual accomplishments on your profile and in status updates. Don't be shy. Don't assume someone's going to read between the lines of a of the description in your background info about what you did that was so great. You've got to shout it from the rooftops. You've got to be really explicit about your success, about what you're good at, about the impact that you have made. And that's one of the things that we talk about in level one when we go through the profile. When you describe your previous roles, they shouldn't read like a job description. Don't talk about what you did every day. Talk about what you accomplished. What impact did you have? What successes were there because you were there? Okay. 
the more you can attach numbers to that, the better, but even just storytelling is, is important. And then share those in status updates too, or in postings. Um, and be a proactive voice in groups. So we talk about LinkedIn groups in session two, um, which again will be in two months or you can watch the recording. Um, we talked last time about how groups can be a useful place to find people with whom to connect and to build your network. But they can also be extremely valuable for building your brand. If you are active in a group that's relevant for your goals, you start to build a reputation as someone who knows what they're talking about. You share content, you share, um, you engage with other people's content, but you share your own content, right? Or you share articles and, and helpful tips for people. You start to build a reputation there. And so when someone in that group hears about an opportunity or has an opportunity for a cupcake baker, they're like, oh, Sherry has been like a rock star in my cupcake baking group. I'm going to bring this to her, right? All right. Um, you heard me mention content. Content marketing is another really important piece of building a brand. OK, so there are places on LinkedIn to find and share content. I'll go. I'll show you that in a moment. But then there's external places where you can do content as well, like SlideShare, which is like a slide deck platform. Um, and then YouTube and TikTok. If you don't have your own content yet, just make it. It doesn't have to be super fancy, but like put together a slide deck on something that you know really well that's relevant to your goals, post it up on SlideShare. Make a five minute video that shares tips about something, post it on YouTube. And then you know what else you can do? Share a link to those to the to that video on LinkedIn and in your LinkedIn groups. Okay. And that stuff can be repurposed, take on a life of its own and help build your rec recommendation, uh, help build your reputation. Um, but let's go to LinkedIn. Um, so that I can show you um, where to find content. So content, um, you'll find content in the newsfeed just by scrolling through, but also if you scroll down on the homepage to this section here, which shows you sort of a, a brief snapshot of stuff going on in um, you know, your network, your groups and events and hashtags, if you go all the way down to the bottom and click on discover more right here, this takes you to a place where LinkedIn is going to kind of suggest people and pages um, and outlets uh, to follow. And when you add these to your to your network, when you start following them, that gives you access to other content that you can see. Um, or you can just look and say, oh, I never thought about following Alice and Helper. And let's see what she's posted recently. And then I see that she posted this super interesting article, right? Um, the super interesting, the super interesting video, I'm going to grab this post of hers and post it to one of my groups. And suddenly I am a very, a great networker and a very good resource for everyone in that group to have um, highlighted this video for them and this resource. So that's just a way to, to get more content. Um, okay. Um, but also, you, like I said, you need to post your own content as well, okay? Um, this is, in the end, how you build the strongest reputation, not by posting others' content, but by creating your own. And you don't have to write a book every time, um, but you should but you should be creating content, yeah, like every couple weeks to stay on people's radar and sharing that out, becoming a resource. Um, and then I would say if you're if you're really trying to build a brand, try and post something, even if it's sharing other people's content, a couple times a week. And then try and post your own every couple of weeks. Um, and like I said, it could be a short article, it could be a video, it could be a slide, whatever it is, just something that's relevant for the brand you're trying to build. So how do you think of what content you should be creating? Um, this is all related to your brand, right? If you answered those brand building questions, then you should have a pretty good idea of this. But these are some other um, questions to ask yourself about, um, that will help you come up with things to say. And remember that, that it should get you excited. If you're not passionate about it, it maybe isn't the right brand for you and the right topic for you. Um, and then that note at the end, don't forget your keywords. This is something that we talked about a lot in session one related to the profile, but it's important for any content that you put out on LinkedIn because the robots on LinkedIn are always searching for keywords, right? Um, so um, 
for your brand, as well as for the job that you want to get, there are keywords that are most relevant. Okay. And if you use those keywords in your profile and in your uh, posts and in your content, um, it will get it will get flagged by both the LinkedIn robots and all the humans who are paging through the news feeds, their news feeds and search results, and they will see the, those keywords and um, and then they will notice you. Um, okay, I went through that really fast, um, but that's really the basics, right? You. Figure out, you define your brand, okay? And then you use content marketing and and promotion on LinkedIn via groups and and posting content and sharing content to create a reputation for yourself. And if you have an impressive profile, a strong network, and a strong brand, the opportunities will come to you, right? but you got to have all these pieces together. And that's where sort of the three pieces of this workshop series fit together. Um, So I'm going to go back and answer all the questions that have come up. Um, We still have about 10 minutes left, but I want to just wrap up and then we can spend the rest of our time on Q&A. So what now? As you probably have surmised, this isn't a one and done, and this is, there's no silver bullet to success on LinkedIn. Even if you pay the $35 or so a month for LinkedIn Premium, that doesn't replace all the strategy and time that you have to put in to have a strong foundation. You've got to do this stuff, but when you do this stuff, LinkedIn can really show up for you, can really turbocharge your job search, your prospects, and in the end, your career as well. If you build a strong brand, it can open doors for you that you probably right now don't even realize exist, okay? Put in some time. If you're actively job seeking or you are actively trying to build a personal brand, I would say you're probably gonna be on LinkedIn two to three times a week. If you're not doing either of those things, um, I would recommend going on once a week just to stay engaged with your network, engage with people's content, show up for your groups, et cetera, just so that you don't lose that. Um, But yeah, two to three times a week, 20 to 30 minutes, you know, obviously job searching and looking through and and finding connections and networking and reaching out to people might take a little longer, but it's all in one place. So it, it, it's a little more efficient and you can easily find connections that you have and network your way through your network. Um, more easily than in other places. Um, Okay, Um, reminder to be yourself. That's who's going to get hired. So even as you're building your brand, make sure it feels authentic to you because that's how you're going to maintain it for the long term also. And then have fun with it. Um, Like I said, there's so many possibilities here as you build this foundation for yourself. Um, You're going to meet new people. You're going to discover new things and get new opportunities. And so I hope you view it in that light as opposed to kind of another burden on a to-do list. (laughs) Um, Okay, that's it. Um, Let's um, go to Q&A now and um, I will go through what's been submitted. Please feel free to submit more questions. If you would like to hop off now, please do so. You won't hurt my feelings. Um, But uh, yeah, I I, um, thank you all for coming if you do leave, but I'll I'll go to Q&A. Okay, so any personal branding course you can recommend? Um, I don't have one, Ax. Those are good questions and examples of LinkedIn profiles with great branding. I don't have those ready either, but I'm going to add that. I'm going to make a note to have those ready in future sessions because that's a great, that's a great point and I should have that. Okay. Um, do you recommend having a blog or website or writing on others' websites? Great question. Um, so um, you can have a blog or website, but actually LinkedIn enables you to basically have your own blog right here. If you see at the top of your of your newsfeed here, it says write article. So you can actually, I can write an article um, and post it to LinkedIn and it gets shared with all my whole network. And then anyone in my network who interacts with it, likes it, comments on it or shares it, it will get seen by their whole network. So LinkedIn sort of gives me a built in very broad 
audience for my content right away. So there's no otherwise benefit for having my own blog except to sort of reinforce that branding. So what you could do is you could put up your blog and then repost the content to LinkedIn also. And that might be a cool way to do it. Um, ideally, you would have your own and post to others blogs if you have that opportunity, um, because having your own blog can provide validation for your brand. It kind of strengthens the fact that you are, are, are someone. Um, a chance to post to someone else's blog that gives you um, access to their network. Um, so, um, so know if you need to make changes. So um, I'm happy to offer profile reviews. It will be more qualitative. I don't particularly have like a rubric or um, a set of, of progress in terms of success on LinkedIn. Um, you just try things and see what seems to be working to get you more engagement, more, more outreach from recruiters, more um, answers from people you reach out to. So it's a little bit more trial and error than that. Yeah. Okay, or series, but what I've noticed at least back when I was in tech was that like Medium and some of those other platforms tended to be where the technical people would congregate. Um, but LinkedIn is always a good place to repost stuff like that too, because it does you you can often get a broader audience on LinkedIn. Any other questions? It's been so much. You guys have been awesome. Really, really just, like sophisticated, interesting questions. I love it. All right, well, let's stop there. Um, anyone um, who has follow-up questions, wants me to look at your profile, wants to just talk more about it, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Don't forget to add a note if you haven't done it already. Um, and uh, and I look forward to connecting with you all. Feel free to come to sessions one and two that are going to be over the next couple months, or you can look on the library's YouTube channel for recordings of past sessions. And I wish you all the best of luck as you do your job searches and build your personal brands. And I look forward to noticing you on LinkedIn sometime soon. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing your knowledge on how to leverage our networks, how to build our brands, and to search for jobs. I also like to thank everyone for joining. I hope you found this presentation informative and helpful to you. I'll be sending out a survey along with the link to the recording later today. And if you guys could take the time to fill out the survey, that would be great. Any feedback can help us improve in our programming. And with that, enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and good luck on your job search.